And I too rise, as uh, my colleague from Hawaii just rose, to speak uh, in support of the Department of Defense and in opposition to the amendment offered by uh, the Senator from Pennsylvania. Uh, as been outlined, this amendment would strike funding for a very important and effective Navy program which now works with private industry along with the Department of Energy and the Department of Agriculture to produce alternative fuels. And as we work together to overcome the harm that's been done by sequestration, it's essential that we provide the military with the flexibility to overcome current and future threats. And that includes allowing the DOD to invest in energy sources and fuel technologies that reduce our dependence on foreign oil. And unfortunately, the Toomey Amendment does the opposite. And in so doing, it would do real harm to our military. It would cost more money than it saves, Mr. President, and it would damage the military's strong and necessary efforts to reduce its dependence on foreign oil. Mr. President, carrying out the work of our nation, the Department of Defense consumes approximately 330,000 barrels of oil every single day. That works out to be 120 million barrels per year. What does that cost us, Mr. President? Well, last year, the military spent over $16 billion on fuel. Because of rising global oil prices, that was about $2.5 billion more than they'd forecast. That is a lot of money, Mr. President. Those rising costs in dollars and in operational capability, they're, they're, they're staggering. I think that's the only word that applies. If you think about it, for every 25% increase in the price per gallon of oil, the military's fuel bill increases by a billion dollars. And in order to make up for that shortfall, then the DOD has to pull money from operations and maintenance, which means that rising fuel costs result in less training, deferred maintenance, and reduced operational capability. That's a terrible triad if there ever was one. And that means that our troops then are also less prepared when they go into harm's way. They're less ready to fight when it matters most. The Toomey Amendment would undercut efforts to end that cycle. It would delay the development of technologies that would clearly bring lower costs, less domestic production, and fewer American jobs. And that's why the DOD is investing <clears throat> in these domestic alternatives to foreign oil. And it should tell us something, Mr. President, in an era of reduced Department of Defense budgets, <clears throat> that our senior leaders remain fully committed to this effort. Even when we've got to tighten our belts, they think this is an investment that really makes sense. What are we doing? Well, we're investing in research and development that will develop new fuels that can be made from biological feedstocks. These are fuels that can be grown and then refined here at home. And Mr. President, I want to be clear, these, these aren't programs that are being forced on the DOD through earmarks or environmentalists or other groups that some like to demonize. These are DOD initiatives undertaken to protect the military from rising fuel costs and an increasingly volatile international marketplace. So even under the threat of sequestration, investments in new energy technologies and alternative refuels remain a priority. And I'd say to my friends who say we can't afford to spend money on alternative fuels, our uniformed senior leaders tell us that we can't afford not to. Think about it another way. We send $300 billion overseas every year for oil. If we could keep about 1 20th of a percent of that money at home, we'd pay for this program. For about half of what we spend on military bans each year, we could be establishing a domestic energy industry. For about 1 6th of the cost of this year's funding for the MEADS missile system, a system that the DOD has no intention of putting into operational use, we could diversify our energy portfolio and drive down costs. We'd be taking billions out of the hands of terrorists and reducing the risk at the same time to our military personnel. Now, Mr. President, the proponents for cutting off these investments in alternative fuels would argue that the Defense Department should not be involved in the development of new energy sources. I couldn't disagree more. Let me tell you why. These biofuels couldn't be used as leverage against us. 
The refineries wouldn't be taken over, couldn't be taken over by Al-Qaeda, backed extremists, or blockaded by Iranian gunboats. Energy security is national security. And this is exactly the right kind of investment that our military should be making. Just think historically. Military R&D has sustained the enormous technological advantage that we maintain over our adversaries. Our willingness to invest in the future has helped keep us safe. It's also been said that the DOD shouldn't be spending money on energy development. And if that were the case, we wouldn't have a nuclear-powered Navy. Without military investment and merging technologies, we wouldn't have jet engines, microchips, microwave ovens, radar, or GPS navigation. Ensuring our energy security ought to be a national priority. Our reliance on foreign oil is a threat to our security and our economy, and I suggest even our very way of life. We need a whole of America solution to this national problem, and the Department of Defense absolutely has a critical role to play in that effort. If you believe that the DOD has a vested interest in having reliable sources of fuel and energy, then you should agree they have a role to play in ensuring that new fuels meet their needs. As I mentioned, we're all concerned about the effect of sequestration on our troops, but we can't solve our problems with the same kind of short-sighted thinking that got us here in the first place. Killing the Navy's biofuels program, Mr. President, make no mistake, that's exactly what this amendment would do, will cost more money than it saves. It will set back an industry that's poised to provide our country with enormous and important benefits. And it will make sure, it will ensure that we keep pouring money into foreign coffers. So I, I want to urge my colleagues to continue to support smart investments in our future, like the Navy's biofuels initiative. And therefore, I urge my colleagues to oppose the Toomey Amendment.